Hello, my name is Lyle Dilley with the uh, I'm with the Stray Mountain Community College and this is Boyer Mind Learning with Lyle Dilley. I wanted to quickly go over uh, shape tweens and shape prints and how they work in Adobe Animate 2020. Uh, with that being said, let's just get right into it. All right, right here I've created uh, my own dashboard over here, my own artboard, and uh, it's uh, 1280 by 720 uh, frames per second. 30 right now, and that's not important for the moment. Uh, a lot of times I'll have it 24, so let's just go to that. Now that I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do a quick little shape tween. This is very, very, very simple. It's about taking a shape and just converting it to another shape very simply, okay? So let's just do this very simply. I'm gonna do a fill, no stroke, okay? Let's do a little red line that says there's no stroke, okay? Got a fill, no stroke. Once I do that, I'm gonna take any shape, whether from rectangle, over tools, or even some of these shapes from the polystar tool, but let's just do a square, just draw a square, okay? That's it. Um, I can tell that it's a shape according to Adobe Animate, because if I click on it, right, using my selection tool, uh, I see a lot of dots when I select it on it. That basically means that it is seeing that it is a shape, okay? I know, uh, I'm not sure if that feels confusing or not, but that's how Adobe Animate really sees shape. So if you click on something and you don't see these dots, it's actually not going to see it as a shape when you take the shape tool. It's very important to see the dots, okay? So, uh, that'll become more important later. Now I'm going to go to my first second and I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe. Okay? Not a frame, a keyframe. Okay? So I'm going to insert a keyframe right here. Okay? Now insert a keyframe copies this first frame, goes it, and then makes it into another frame. Okay? But I don't have to necessarily keep this frame. Now I could shape it a little bit. Okay, uh, you know, in the past I've said you can actually take a lot of shapes, move it, configure it, and actually shape it. All right, so now I have this shape, and I want it to mold into that shape. Okay, so now that I have this frame, this key, now I have new keyframe over here. All I need to do next is go back to the beginning right click this and create a shape tween. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Right? I'm right clicking, creating a shape tween. Now if I do this correctly, you'll actually see that this thing turns to gold. And you'll see a line that's basically saying I'm going to go from this shape to this shape. Now if I scroll through it, you'll see that it's automatically going from one shape to the next shape really cool and this is very versatile too I know this seems kind of really really simplified but it's very versatile uh, one way that I can tell that it's versatile is that if I select just this and I maybe add some more to it let's say that I add another square to it right down the center like an axe alright um, let's say I select the whole thing and I change the color to something else let's say uh, red um, it's still going to say this is the first and it wants to convert it to this shape. So let's see. Bam. It's converting to that shape. Okay. Now, if I want to continue down the road to the next second, I'll just go into here and do the exact same thing. I'll right click it, insert a K frame, boom, right into it. Okay. Now that I have this other keyframe, uh, it's not converting because I haven't made a shape tween. But now, one also thing that I can do is I can delete the entire shape in this keyframe right here. If I delete that entire shape, I can add a new shape. And I could even add multiple shapes. I can change its color. Right? It still says this is my first shape and it's going to move into my next shape. So if I go ahead, I'm going to go to that first one, right click it, convert to shape tween, see if it works. So 
So it divided into three different shapes and is all converting into those three circles. Look at that. I love it, right? So it can be very versatile. If I'm not 100% happy with it, I can move it. I can press Q and I can reshape it. I can even go into here just like that and even shape these into slightly different shapes, right? I could even put them together. And it'll still do the same thing. It's just going to make these decisions, right? Now, remember, I had uh, gone over, so don't forget that I had actually, uh, you know, based on some of the other stuff that I've talked about in the past, it does actually cut it out, all right? When you start uh, putting one shape next to another shape, all right? So, that being said, um, one thing that you can also do uh, with this kind of... Uh, shape tweens is you can actually also shape tween uh, text letters numbers and all that kind of good stuff but it's not as straightforward but it is still cool okay so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go in here insert the keyframe okay I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna go into a text I'm gonna say while okay it's my name don't wear it out I might uh, go over here under objects, change the font, maybe even change the color. Okay. Now, one thing you'll notice in there, and this keys into what I was talking about before, okay, is you'll notice that when I click on it, it doesn't have those dots. Okay. So even if I wanted to, to go into here and say shape tween, it's going to not work because it's not going from one shape to another shape. Okay? I'm going to press Control Z, undo it. Let's go back to this text. I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong. Okay? So what I'm doing wrong is, is that, that I am treating this like um, like it's a shape, but it's not. So it needs to be converted to shape. Conversion to shape is actually really, really simple. <clears throat> Under modify, if you break apart any text, it actually converts it to a shape. So control B, okay, will convert all of it into a shape. It broke apart each one into its own shape, okay? But let's go ahead and do it again. Control B, there we go. So I press control B twice because I have two. And the reason you have to press control brief twice is one to separate the letters and then turn those letters into shapes, right? So I pressed it twice. If you have one letter, you only have to do it once. But since I have multiple letters, I have to do it twice. I'm going to press Q, right? Q for transform. Let's hold the shift key and make it bigger. And let's try that again. Right click, create a shape tween. Now if you look, it went ahead and it took that gold and drew the arrow that automatically tells you that this process had worked. Now let's scrub through it. You can see all these shapes turning into wild. All right, so if I press spacebar to preview, let's play. Boom, 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 wild. Okay, so that's working pretty, pretty good. Now, Let's say, though, that I'm not 100% happy, okay? Let's go ahead and talk for a second about shape hints, okay? Shape hints is that if you, right now, Adobe Animate is deciding for you, okay? It's deciding for you how uh, you want that shape to be, to be created, okay? So what if you wanted to have that control? Instead of Adobe Animate making those decisions for you, you want to have control. Well, the way you do that is with shape hints. You're trying to give um, Adobe Animate uh, some parameters to, from going from one shape to another shape. Okay? So, very simply, under uh, modify and shape, you'll see add a shape hint or control shift H. I use control shift H a lot. Uh, when it comes to shape, it's uh, going back and forth into this. It, it, uh, it actually is a little confusing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and press Control Shift H. It's going to start with A. A means the beginning. Now, shape pins only work for the edge. So when it's turning a little, got a little edge going. Okay. Red means it's still not working yet. It's not working yet because I have to actually go to the end and put it somewhere. Now I've got an edge. Now I'm telling this. Hey, you see this? I want that to start there in the upper left-hand corner, and I want you to end over there in this corner. So I'm telling a very specific guidance, okay? Now if I scroll through it, you'll see that, um, that it's really keeping that part of it exactly the way we want it. Now if you look, look at what's happening over here in this corner, okay? This corner right over here you'll notice that I now have it over there, but it's not working over there. So now I can add multiple shape hints. I'm going to go back to the beginning, press Control shift h add a B, usually like going in a circle. I'm going to go ahead and press that, go to the end here. There's the B down here. Usually best to do this one at a time. So now look, see that? All right. Now, if you look, it's kind of doing something funky in this corner. I don't want it to do something funky. I want it to be very specific in the corner of this ax that I made. So I'm going to press Control shift h again. Go into the corner. To that corner. Let's do this again. Control shift h D. Corner. Corner. Now, let's see how this works. Look how it's specifically now guiding exactly the way I want these corners to go from the square shape in to the um, the square shape into the axe. All right, very cool process. Um, I know that there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to want uh, some of my students to do whenever going from one letter to the next letter to the last letter. You can do this with shapes. You can create your own little animations. You can create another layer and have um, shapes creating with other shapes and layering. And you can create some amazing, psychedelic, fun, little, quick animations that will take a lot of what you're doing to the next level. All right. Well. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, until next time, see you guys later.